good old coffee. Yeah, love me some coffee. Coffee and comics. I think there's some shows on YouTube about that. But either way, what's going on, guys? This is Brian from Simple Man's Comics, and we are here talking about three up trends and three down trends going on in the comic community. This is your first time here. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel, so please consider subscribing. So we have some great trends to talk about this week. The down one I think presents some great opportunities and one might even be controversial that it could be an upward trend, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. But the first upward trend we wanna talk about this week is Frank Gogol. I could easily say, hey, Dead End Kids is up. It released, I mean, it was sold out before it even released. A lot of hot variants for this. If you're not familiar with Dead End Kids, it's an independent comic from Source Point Press. It's actually the Dead End Kids, The Suburban Job, which is volume two. I say Frank Gogol is up all around because the No Heroin trade also released. No Heroin, the first volume of Dead End Kids, his trade paperback grief that he won a Ringo Award for. Everything he touches, everything he writes, it's a sellout. And it's not only just because it's great writing, great stories, because Frank Gogol is a man that hustles. He hustles across social media. He pops on everyone's YouTube channels. He's been on ours. He's been on Friends of the Channel. He's been on a bunch of places. But that combined with these fantastic stories that he writes just immediately sell out. And Dead End Kids, The Suburban Job is right there along with it. In fact, let me know in the comments if you were able to pick any of these up today. Some stores didn't have them. Some stores sold out really, really quick. And if you want to and you want to get caught up, remember that Dead End Kids Volume 1 trade paperback is available for as low as $9.99 up there on Source Point Press site. But the next upward trend we want to talk about this week is, I'll go ahead and tell you right now, these next two are actually kind of related to COVID and the innovative techniques that have occurred. These have occurred before COVID, don't get me wrong, but with the lack of comic conventions, with the lack of people not able to get out as much, the first one we're talking about is private signings between CGC, CBCS, and a bunch of retailers also doing private signings. They are actually an upward trend right now. CGC actually just announced a new private signing with Humberto Ramos, but they also got Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman, as well as Green Power Ranger, multiple Power Rangers at that, even Draken, even White Ranger, but we also have Jason David Frank doing science for CGC. CBCS is following suit. They got Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman as well. They also have Gabrielle Del Otto, as well as Giuseppe Comincoli and Ben Oliver. It's a great trend right now. A lot of people are submitting it, submitting books for these private signings they've done before. They have, Todd McFarlane was a big one not too long ago. I think regular submitters of graded books might feel a different way about it because they feel that the turnaround time on the books that they're submitting might be being held up from being graded and returned. But either way, these private signings is something that is a growing trend and is definitely very popular right now. Last one we're talking about on the upper trend. Another reaction to COVID, again, this occurred before COVID, but it's definitely more popular now. And with eBay, a lot of people kind of shine away from eBay just because of it doesn't really protect the seller as much. It tends to protect the buyer more. And now they've switched to their payout. They're not paying out through PayPal. They have their own separate payout. And not to mention that it holds your funds for a certain amount of time. So I've heard, I haven't been selling on eBay. With that, people are shifting not only to Instagram, but Facebook live sales and Facebook auctions are a very popular trend right now. You're seeing a lot of Facebook groups that pop up. I was just invited one recently. There's a bunch of them out there. And there's pros and cons to that, of course. I mean, you always wanna protect yourself as a buyer. Those groups are great, and Facebook sales and auctions, or raffles, or something there of that type are definitely occurring, and there's some great buying opportunities for books out there. But with that being said, we're gonna shift over to the downward trends right now. But like I said at the beginning of this video, there's. There's some great buying opportunity here, but there's also one I think could be controversial and you could easily say it's on the upper trend as well. But the first one we're talking about is comic book trading cards. We've talked about trading the comic book trading cards on this channel before. Trading cards, if you aren't aware, they are back with a vengeance. And I'm talking about sports cards. If, if you haven't been paying attention, yes, the, all the cards that I collected when I was a kid before I really collected comics, Hmm, not so much, but cards nowadays with these one of ones, one of tens, these refractors, these different trading cards are booming. And I think there's a great buying opportunity within the comic book trading cards, especially some of those upper deck cards that are out there. We've talked about on this channel before. You can get a one of one print, especially with Peach Momoko being hot. That Marvel anime series has a bunch of Peach Momoko art, but not only that, the Marvel universe, these showcase an artist 
and you get great prints, you get sketch cards. There's a lot of great cards in there. And if that trend follows where the sports cards are going, it's really, really juvenile right now. And I think it has a lot of room to grow. And they're not super cheap, but very affordable compared to if you were to look at like say, uh, Panini basketball by any means. Not saying comic cards are there yet, but if the trend follows suit, it's one that I'm a buy in, especially right now when it's still at a lower level. And it's, it's awesome because I enjoy collecting cards. I still collect Garbage Pail Kids. So I think enjoy the hobby. And if something great comes from it, that's awesome. If not, I still have cards that I enjoyed collecting to begin with. Now this next one is the one that I was talking about that could be controversial and if you but hold up, this is actually hot right now. We're talking about Invincible. Yes, Invincible Special Issues number one and that Larry's Comics variant is selling really, really well. But I think there's still a lot of room to grow on that vine. I mean, you almost got first appearances in all those single issues, one through 10. There's some fantastic greater issues. They're not dollar bin or $5 books, but I still think there's room to grow on those books and it's a great opportunity right now. We just received news that, hey, yes, we know there's an animated series, but the, the live action movie's still in the works. So we get two media properties right there. And I know a lot of people don't just like to read the comics for the stories, they like that movie side of it. So with the movie side and an animated show, I think there's not a lot of attention on those Invincible books right now, but that will probably change once you start seeing trailers or more news about it. And then the last downward trend I wanna talk about this week is Suicide Squad. When that first Suicide Squad movie came out a couple years ago, those books were moving left and right. Here we have an A-plus director in James Gunn. I mean, he made Guardians of the Galaxy super relevant to a, to a new generation. It's my kid's favorite movie. It's actually my favorite Marvel movie, but both of them, Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy 2 are probably two of my favorite Marvel movies out of the whole MCU, and I'll stand by it. But James Gunn directing Suicide Squad, and you're not seeing a lot of movement on a lot of the books from the characters that are gonna be in here. Now, there's a lot of great actors. You got, you know, some A-listers like Idris Elba playing Bloodsport. You're not seeing a lot of movement on Bloodsport books. And the ones that you are seeing movement on is Peacemaker, John Cena. We all know there's gonna be a Peacemaker show. Those books are selling really well. But a lot of those other characters or tie-ins that are gonna appear in the new Suicide Squad movie, they aren't selling that much. Most of the Suicide Squad books that are selling are actually the older books that doesn't really tie into this team. And then of course, a lot of the first appearances from the characters in this new movie, they're not actually Suicide Squad title books. They actually appear in other series. And those books aren't doing much either. But I think today they released some new footage. The movie doesn't come out until what, August or later this summer. We know it's gonna be on HBO Max. And I pray in fact, I'll double down and say, it's gonna be way better than Wonder Woman 84. Sorry for all the fans out there that liked Wonder Woman 84, but wasn't my cup of tea. I think this is gonna be a great, great movie. I also don't know how many of these characters are gonna be killed off. There's a lot of great characters, a lot of great actors. You know, are we gonna get a Deadpool type scenario here where we got these great characters introduced and they're dead in five minutes? Either way, if you're interested in Suicide Squad, I think now's a great time to pick up those books. And with that being said, guys, this is three up, three down for this week. Make sure you hit that like button for me. And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. This is Brown with Superman's Comics. I'll see you guys in the next video.